second and ten now. Halfway through the third quarter. Ray dodges more traffic, and here he goes again that time. Draws the penalty. Corey Banks was flying through the air. Ricky Ray with a hook slide. And I'll tell you what I don't like about this call is I think Corey Banks avoided him. I think Corey Banks goes over top and avoided the impact. Unnecessary roughness. He's in the 24. 15 yards at the end of the play. First down. One thing, though, yeah. the officials have been very consistent in calling this, haven't they? Well, they have, and I'll, and I'll credit, credit them for that. But Corey Banks can't stop running, but he avoids making the hit, and that's all he can do in that situation. He just put his hands on him to avoid the impact. That's all Corey Banks can do in that situation. And it, if I was a BC coach, I couldn't fault him there for taking that penalty. BC Lions again a week ago in Winnipeg. And a big lead. Evaporate on them because of penalties, because of the Blue Bombers. Now an automatic first down and up the pike. Daniel Porter again. Again, you're going to start to see things open up a little bit between the tackles because of what Ricky Ray is doing outside of the tackles. Seeing BC start to adjust, we showed Corey Banks on a play earlier, Adam Leonard on a previous play on this possession, where the linebackers are having to start to follow Ricky Ray on his bootleg. That's pulling them out of the middle, creating some gaps now for the running back quarter to run inside. Second and one. Play action. Ray! Down he goes. Solomon Elamimian with the sack. His fifth of the season. The guy they call Aluminum. Because even though he's become a household name, not many can pronounce that name. Well, I just call him the Eliminator. And here he eliminates Ricky Ray. Solomon Elamimian is spying the quarterback, Ricky Ray. Ray goes outside. Elamimian goes outside. Play over. Nigerian born, played his college football at the University of Hawaii with the Rainbows. Having an all star like season, his rookie season in the CFL. Giannis Davis is back, Shavoni now, a wobbler. Davis changed the game in the third quarter a week ago, now goes backwards, continues going backward, and also a penalty flag on the play. Well, of course, they are playing this season at Empire Field because in downtown Vancouver, BC Place, you look over there right now, you don't see that big pillow, the roof that was on because they're renovating it for next year. Grey Cup will be played in Vancouver next year, and you can see the work on it. They have a webcam there. Daily, you can take a look and see the progression. bcplace.com slash construction. And they built this temporary facility on the old grounds of what used to be Empire Stadium, where the Lions began playing decades ago. And Wayne Ford was born. Nice little facility here. It gets loud. The fans stamp their feet on the metal bleachers. Jamal Robertson out of the backfield. Robertson, a big gainer. BC Lions get a mismatch that they like in terms of coverage here. The middle linebacker, Javi Glatt, he's got his eyes on the running back, Jamal Robertson. Robertson releases, comes across the formation. Glatt's not able to stay with him. Springs to the outside, he's got a step right there. And you're gonna see that gap widen as Jamal Robertson takes off. There he goes again, carrying the mail this time, and Robertson close to his average pickup of 6.9 yards on the ground. Jamal Robertson, also one of those game changers. It's been a great acquisition for the BC Lions. Last year, they, of course, had Martel Mallet, the Rookie of the Year, in their backfield. Decided to go south to try out the National Football League. Robertson has been a great pickup. Second and six yards. Looked like the Lions may have jumped. 
Harris Jackson goes up and comes down with the football. But unless that Edmonton line moved, it looked like the BC receivers might have been a half yard ahead of everybody else. And there is another injured player on the field. Offside, BC number 81. Five yard penalty, repeat second down. So it'll be second and almost a full 10 yards now. Chris Thompson will hobble to the sideline. G. Roy Simon right near the number 50. A little extra skip there. And I think Stephen Black was offside at the bottom of the screen as well. Starting halfback Lawrence Gordon is the Eskimo limping off the field. Over quick cut. Randy Drew comes in to replace him. G. Roy Simon inching closer to another 1,000 yard season, 15 yards away. Lule, a deep drop. Robertson. Mark Rostelli ran it perfectly on second down. We'll set up third down now for the Lions. Nowhere to romp that time for JR. So Sean White will now punt it away once we get rid of another guy who decides that he wants to run around the field and spend the night in jail. It's not a full moon, right? It's a half moon. Kamal Peterson. In civilian clothes. Achilles injury. Tough year for Kamau Peterson. Just a correction, that's Chris Thompson, who's the injured Eskimo. I'd misidentified him earlier. Desperate teams playing here tonight. The Edmonton Eskimos more desperate than BC Lions. Should the Lions win tonight, that would really put a dent in any hope the Eskimos have. Edmonton has two games against Saskatchewan, one against Winnipeg. Win tonight by Edmonton, though, evens the standings up in the West with the Lions. It's over three minutes to go in the third quarter. The Eskimos with a five-point lead. Canadian, made from Canada. I'm here tonight yet from Empire Field. The Edmonton Eskimos have the football again. 20-yard line, Ricky Ray going vertical for Derek Armstrong. Did he make that catch? Yes, he did. Welcome back, Derek Armstrong. This is just a fantastic effort to lay out by Derek Armstrong. He's man-to-man -man coverage against Ryan Phillips, gets in behind him as the ball trails towards the sideline, makes a nice adjustment, gets his hands under, keeps the feet in. Perfect catch by Derek Armstrong. Again, a guy who was let go by these BC Lions. Given that emergency call by the Eskimos, depleted that receiver because of injury. Daniel Porter with a high step close to midfield. Seems almost every play, someone is coming up limping or grimacing on both sides of the ball. Well, Daniel Porter right now looks like he can't decide whether to take a knee or, or try to walk it off. But it has been a physical football game, and that's exactly what you'd expect at this time of year. Not that right. Bruising game. Porter again, left side this time. And rolls over the 50-yard line and has a first down. What a find Daniel Porter has been. Well, how about the rushing attack from the Edmonton Eskimos as a whole? Led by Ricky Ray, Daniel Porter now approaching 100 yards. Calvin McCarty and Mathieu Bertrand trip, chipping in as well. Season high, 241 rushing yards as a team. 
They look pretty good doing it for a team that has lived and died with the arm of Ricky Ray for years. Running again. Oh, wow. Ricky Ray took a wicked hit. And that is the danger of escaping that pocket. But he's up. I don't know how he got up. Solomon Elamimian supplies the jolt. Well, Ricky Ray, first of all, wants a shovel pass to Calvin McCarty. McCarty's behind the line of scrimmage. Elamimian's mirroring him. That's gone. So now Ricky Ray's got to scramble back. Watch who comes and gets him. The aluminum man. The eliminator. Second and seven. Penalty flag flies. Play clock and wound down. Time count violation. Edmonton number 15. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Ricky Ray's done a lot of running tonight. Hasn't had to take many hits. That one might keep him in the pocket a little longer. Ricky Ray's taken a lot of hits this season. Not too many like that. Thirteenth man into it. Second and twelve. The outlet, McCarty, great tackle by Anton McKenzie. And the Lions will call on Sean White on third down. The Eskimos, rather, will call on Derek Shaboni on third down. How about Shaboni's night tonight? Derek Shaboni, just perfect. Night first game since taking over for Noel Prefontaine. And it amazes me that with the importance of kicking in the Canadian Football League, that guys like Derek Chagoni, Sandro DeAngelis went undrafted. How about the story of Canadian kickers this year? Chagoni spiraling kick. <laughs> the guy has become one of the most feared return men in the league. Final play, third quarter. 15 minutes to play, maybe more, who knows? 2015 Edmonton. ...have had the ball for about two-thirds of this football game. Now, it gets to this time of year. It's not that cold tonight, but a little bit chilly. And when you're an offensive player for BC, you hate getting cold sitting on the sidelines. It's tough to, tough to stay warm, tough to get in a flow when you're never getting a chance to get on the field. And one of the hardest-hitting games of the season those hits hurt a little bit more in that chilly autumn air here tonight. A lot of injuries. Both sides, both sides not immune from the injury bug here tonight. Twin backs in the eye formation for Travis Lule. Play action. And laying out Emmanuel Arsenal, but the pass is incomplete. Arsenal does everything he can to go and get this one, but just it just tailed off as it got out to him. Nicely executed bootleg. John Hamister Reese gets out in front to pick up the defensive end Petway. All that perhaps could have been caught would have been a real tough catch. AC Lions, this fourth quarter has been their nemesis this season. Minus 38 in points. In the fourth quarter. Lost a lot of close ones too. Lule spun around and dropped. And this will be a deep kick. Indeed, if Sean White will kick this, or will he give up two? Well, this is a great look. Mark Rostelli, Rod Davis come up to the line of scrimmage. They look like they're going to blitz, but keep an eye on the right side for TJ Hill who is the only get the guy who comes. Rod Davis drops out after sucking in the blocker. E.J. Hill ends up unblocked on the play. Again, Sean White wasn't listed to play tonight. Paul McCallum, supposed to be rostered, was not, and he'll give up two points to make this a seven-point game. 
Time now for our sack tally brought to you by Purelater tackling hunger across Canada. Check. BC Lions with 40 sacks and the Edmonton Eskimos just 26. The BC Lions wishing Ricky Ray would throw the ball a little more. Not only is he killing them on the ground, but he's preventing them from taking over top spot. Well, anything can happen here now. Edmonton Eskimo team riddled with injury, adversity all season long. General manager Danny Machocha fired. Eric Tillman comes in. A lot of change in personnel. Picked up a couple of wins along the way that seem to galvanize this team. A loss last week and a chance for a win here tonight to pull even with the BC Lions. One of the things you have to like if you're Richie Hall, it would be easy to think that the loss last week, and particularly the way they lost that football game, that the Edmonton Eskimos might fold the tents and be done for the rest of the year. You've got to like the way they've bounced back tonight and shaken off that loss. Eldon Brown is back. So too. Oh, Eldon Brown takes a couple of hits. Kristen Jackson back too, but Brown taking the football, bringing it to the 47-yard line. So good field position for Ricky Ray to work with early in this fourth quarter. If you think the ground game has been big up until this point, how do you think this fourth quarter with the seven-point lead is going to go for the Edmonton Eskimos? Again, we're used to Ricky Ray putting up some gaudy numbers, but normally in passing, not on the ground. Backs in for a blocking help. Ray going deep for Armstrong. Falls, and it's picked off by Ryan Phillips. But there's a penalty flag, and it's likely pass interference against the Lions. Well, this is going to be an interesting one to take a look at. We've discussed it so many times this year. Pass interference is a tough call because it is. A judgment call made at full speed. My initial thought was these guys got tangled up on incidental contact. DC number 21. Ball is spotted at the point of the foul. First down. Ryan Phillips thought he had the pick. These guys are in the bottom left corner of your screen. Phillips turns as the ball is in the air. Tremendous athletic play for him to, to catch it. But what the official right in front of him saw, Ryan Phillips, took one hand off and made contact with Armstrong and knocked him off. 37-yard pickup on the penalty. High toss, and that one, is it picked? Yes, it is, Dante Marsh. Calvin McCarty had it in his mitts, lost it. And the Eskimos lose the football. Just after the interference call and the apparent interception by Ryan Phillips, Dante Marsh does pick it off. Dante Marsh with his fourth pick of the season. Third turnover by Edmonton, but there is a challenge on the field. Well, there is in some debate as to whether Dante Marsh has this football in time. But first, I want to take a look at the play made by Dante Marsh. He's covering the receiver, Fred Stamps, at the bottom. Stamps tries to go outside of him and get deep to get Marsh to turn his eyes away from that receiver who's running the out behind him. That's Calvin McCarty. But Stamps doesn't get by him in time. Marsh keeps his eyes in front and sees that route coming and makes that break to be in play. Now, the big thing we're looking at here, the right foot of Dante Marsh stays in bounds as he catches that football. Great concentration on the ball here from Marsh. But the right foot is clearly in. He's got control of the football. As he goes down to the turf, maintains possession of that ball. Dante Marsh has got himself a heck of an After interception. After reviewed, the ruling on the field stands. First down, DC. Dante Marsh again, the Lions. Also, without one of their key personnel tonight. Cornerback Davis Sanchez leaving the ball game earlier. Both teams having to resort to backups here. 
Travis Lule now after the turnover. Lule, look out. Elliot Richardson on the safety blitz was in pursuit, finally getting to Lule. But after he had thrown the football, an incomplete pass. Well, Elliot Richardson doesn't come up with the sack, but he certainly gets credit. He's going to come from depth here, and he gets credit for causing this incompletion. He hits this thing running, and he forces Travis Lule to throw this ball away earlier than he wants to. What a difference Elliot Richardson has made for this Edmonton defense since his return from injury at midseason. Second down and 10 now from the BC 24. Lule has protection. Now he's in trouble. Flips it off. Stephen Black has the first down. Travis Lule looked like he was toast in the backfield. Travis Lule gets a little bit creative. And how about Stephen Black, who was called in on a blocking assignment? Black at the top of the screen had to pick up the blitzing linebacker. That's why he, as a receiver, ends up in the backfield. Travis Lule spots him on the scramble and makes a dish. Could be a huge first down for the Lions, who trail by seven. Lule flushed again. Robertson has to come back to the football. But Matt right there. Jay Hill in on the tackle again. It's ironic with all the BC running backs. We've talked about the yards per carry average of Jamal Robertson. Both he and Giannis Davis, their yards per carry is actually higher than their yards per catch over the course of this season. Robertson in the backfield again. Second down, seven yards now to go. Lule, here he goes and uh, throws it away. Just avoiding a potential sack from Javi Glad, who was right in on Travis Lule. So again, it is kick time for Sean White and the Lions. And what's the effect that G. Roy Simon is going to have on the free safety Elliot Richardson? Simon is at the bottom of the screen. He's on the seam. Downfield quickly once again. Sean Gore makes the tackle. Ooh, did you see that? Seems like everyone's got their game face on for Rona's go for the cup contest. Look at these moves. Here, here, and how about that one? Let's have another look. What diehard football fans. Check out the footwork as they rush for the access to enter the Go for the Cup contest online. Here's what it's all about. A VIP trip to Edmonton for the Grey Cup Championship, a 2010 Nissan Frontier pickup, a Houseman Expert Deluxe Power Tool set. Enter now at rona.ca slash Cup. Rona, doing it right. That's our new Chevrolet Traverse, and we couldn't be happier with it. Looks great and uses just 8.4 liters per 100 highway kilometers. It's got better highway fuel efficiency than the Honda Pilot and 30% more cargo capacity too. Best of all, my Traverse is backed by the best coverage in Canada. Impressive, right? And so is the deal I got. And that's my Chevrolet Traverse. 